This month, a new title joined Cosmo and GQ on the newsagent and supermarket shelves. ML is a monthly lifestyle magazine and the first British glossy to be aimed specifically at the Muslim community. Packed with fashion, travel and cookery features, at first glance it doesn't seem very different from its secular counterparts. So can a lifestyle magazine such as this have a lasting appeal? Zina Sarawiwa has been having a read. The UK has over 3,000 consumer magazines catering to just about every interest. But what if none of these titles reflect your life, your ethics or your aspirations? For the two million Muslims in the UK, there's now a monthly glossy magazine that aims to touch the parts that Heat magazine cannot reach. ML, the Muslim lifestyle magazine. A vibrant and dynamic magazine drawing on the rich heritage of Britain's Muslims. ML Magazine is the first mainstream lifestyle magazine to cater specifically to British Muslims. But considering Muslims in this country can come from many different cultures and can live anywhere from Brick Lane to Bradford, just how do you define a British Muslim lifestyle? In a community that traditionally prefers to put money into new mosques rather than new magazines, ML, meaning hope in Arabic, was set up in East London by convert Sarah Joseph and her husband as a reaction to the events of 9-11. Now, ML has relaunched as a monthly available across the country and aimed equally at men and women. You can't frame your identity on an anti, you know, I'm anti-violence, isn't an identity. And so we needed, we felt that it was necessary to bring about something which was proactive and showed, you know, an identity of what we were for that reflected Muslim life. So, Muslim life is for gardening, sport, fashion and travel, but still, ML isn't quite like other glossies. It's not full on, you know, sex doesn't sell in the Muslim community. It's not something that we're interested in promoting. Um, we don't promote alcohol, we're not into gossip. But it's not heavily serious either. There's lots of lightheartedness in ML and there's lots of humor. An obvious way to show how ML differs is through its fashion coverage. We do the whole layering look. We're looking at the seasons, uh, what's very fashionable at the moment. Of course, the military looks very fashionable at the moment. The Edwardian look is very fashionable at the moment. But how does a Muslim girl wear that? How does a Muslim guy wear that? Because there are limitations on his clothes as well. Every lifestyle article in ML is expressed through the veil of religion. Apparently, there is an Islamic take on music, travel, and sport. But do Muslim readers buy into it? To find out, we assembled our own panel. Miss England, Hamasa Kostani, website editor, Zahid Amanula, and star of The Apprentice, Syra Khan. The magazine's great, it's something new. Nothing like this has been in the market before because um, it has a bit of everything in it. I think there could be a danger that the magazine could spread itself too thin by trying to be so many different things to so many different people. I mean, I'm trying to think about the target audience of this magazine and I, I'm, I think I'm coming to the conclusion that it's really a bit of everyone. I mean, religion is everywhere and Islam is a way of life. So all these things can be practiced in an Islamic way. I'm a little bit too much detached from the Muslim community. I've kind of gone one to another extreme. So for example, in here, there's a lot about Ramzan. And now we're in the month of Ramadan now and I'm not fasting. But when I read that, I think, you know what, I should be because it's a big part of my religion. It's a big part of who I am. ML's glossy paper is not matched by a glossy aspirational content, and our panel noted the lack of certain lifestyle magazine staples, like sex. It's a difficult subject to approach, but I think if you're going to do something like this, you know, have the responsibility to cover the whole lot, don't just miss out the obvious points, which is, oh, we won't talk about sex because, well, we just don't, you know. <laughs> Fashion is another aspect which is a taboo um, topic in the Muslim world. So I think it's good that it covers that in its own really humble way. Humble in this case, meaning not showing the model's heads. Part of the strategy may be to diffuse the criticism that might come from more conservative backgrounds when they see, for example, this woman's not wearing hijab, for example. Like that's a big, that could be a big controversy. But you can show a female model from the neck down and, and the issue never comes up.
At the same time, if you see, for example, a Somalian woman wearing the outfit, then other readers might think that this outfit is particularly aimed at a Somalian woman, or if you see an Arab woman or an Iranian woman. But having it like this is for every Muslim woman. Yeah, I think that's really important because I think the Muslim communities in Britain, they are actually quite segregated. The, the, the kind of places of integration are mosques for yeah. the men, but the women wouldn't have a chance to integrate, you know, kind of cross-culturally like that at all. So do you actually like the magazine? I, I do like it. I think Muslims have uh, practical requirements just, just to, to live their everyday life, and they're not always addressed by uh, publications that exist right now. Do you know what? I don't. One of the things that I don't find, as a woman, as a Muslim woman who's kind of out there, you know, being mainstream and trying to stop, you know, focusing on my ethnicity or on my religious beliefs, I don't find there's a lot of there's a lot of articles on women like me. You know, and I find that quite difficult. For Hamasa, recently crowned Miss England, the magazine reacquaints her with a world that others feel defines her. Being Muslim has been highlighted quite a lot in the last month of my life. Every article, every TV and press I've done is Muslim this, Muslim that. And this will keep me updated with what's going on with the Islamic world. So I think this will definitely be a priority in my new magazine collection. So, um, I, so it's really good for me. So, three new additions to ML's 20,000 readers then. But in its attempts to be all things to all Muslims, the magazine is bound to fail some. As a lifestyle magazine, it's very good. But I also find it pretty frustrating. It is also very conformist, conservative, and dare I say, consumerist magazine. But this is a charge the editor refutes. I think what we try and promote in Amel is ethical consumerism. At the end of the day, we live in the West. We form part of the West, you know. So when we talk about global warming, it's our computers and our, our electronic goods and our driving the cars, which is adding to that. And so we need to make people aware um, of how we, as a community, are affecting it. It's easy to say the West and, and think of ourselves outside of that, but we are consumers, and that's our reality. But according to Zia, ML puts too much of a gloss on Muslim life. It's basically lacking critical faculties. I mean, it's not, a, it's, it's not critical enough at all, and it's just too conformist and too pious. Uh, uh, I think they're basically trying to present a very orthodox view of Islam. What do young Muslims need most in contemporary Britain? They need critical awareness. They need self-reflection. And this is precisely what ML does not give them. We will cover issues in ML, um, but we tend to look at it, we'll look at the solutions and how people are finding solutions. So we'll cover the high numbers of Muslim prisoners in the prison community, which is disproportionately high, but the way that we've done it is found people who have found a way out, who have left prison and made good, and that they can act as role models for the future. As for ultimately defining what it means to be a British Muslim, this may be a much tougher job. But the move to the mainstream for Emil magazine is groundbreaking because it marks a shift from a narrowly focused political take on Muslim identity. Strange how light-hearted lifestyle journalism should carry such significance. <laughs>